हरे कृष्णा सो टुडे इट्स अ ग्रेट फॉर्च्यून टू बी हैविंग द अपॉर्चुनिटी टू डिस्कस द ग्लोरीज ऑफ लॉर्ड बलराम ऑन द ओकेजन ऑफ हिज अपियरेंस डे एंड वी विल ट्राई टू टुडे understand lord balaram's personality and role by looking at key incidents in his life so generally speaking when we want to know someone we spend time with them we talk with them that's one way we get to know them but another thing is when we get to see them in different situations in different roles that is when we get to know them more and more so we will focus on two main dynamics every person plays multiple roles and has relationship with multiple people but we'll focus on say krishna is here and balaram is here so while krishna and balram are the same we'll see how they are different and say we are here so we'll talk about krishna's relationship with balram and in one sense balram's relationship with us or what is there for us to learn about lord balram and for us to understand how we need to act in our lives so of course while we are discussing this let's first understand in in this relationship in the relationship between krishna and balaram they have a particular flavor they are brothers so while brothers means they primarily come in sakya ras but that is not the only ras that they act in so balaram plays various roles and he also acts in dasyaras it is he who manifests as anantashesh the bed on which the lord appears so that is all there but we will focus not so much on the technical classification of which rasa he manifests when but the essential principle of rasa is the flavor the mellow the sweetness of the relationship and we look at the various moods and roles in which balram ji relates with krishna and then for us in our relationship with balram ji he is primarily the guru he is the guru tattva he is the person who is the link between us and krishna so we will try to understand when he is playing this role and when his actions are primarily in terms of his relationship with krishna and when they are a combination of both so sometimes say when two senior devotees are having some discussion now we might be present over there and we might get to hear certain things but those things are not meant primarily for us you know so sometimes there the two senior devotees might do a public podcast where they are having a discussion which is also meant to be heard by others but when two of them are talking primarily now we may hear it if we happen to be there but if it's a private discussion then it's not meant for everyone it may not be relevant to everyone it may not be applicable to everyone so like that there are some past times of balram ji which are much more confidential hmm? and which are guhiya hmm? and there are some which are much more universal now what the word confidential the sanskrit word is guhiya for this now guhiya is some in sanskrit words are very difficult actually to translate into english now there are two ways of translating this secret or private so while the two seem similar there is a significant difference between the two of them secret actually means 
that which is not to be told to anyone but private means that which is not relevant so for example say some ceremony is going on in a home and say the husband is talking with some guests who have come and the wife needs to talk something with the husband so she may come to the husband and say can i talk can i have a private moment with you can i talk with you something privately now it may not be secret but it is just not relevant to everyone else so guhiya is used more in the sense of private than secret it is not that krishna wants to hide something in the sense of deliberately keeping it as secret but it is just that it is not relevant for those who are not involved in this so krishna often talks about things which are relevant for those who have entered into his world of love and those who are not yet entered into the world of love for them many things may not be relevant so broadly speaking the past times of balaram in relationship with krishna they can be divided into two broad parts one is in vrindavan and the other is outside vrindavan now outside vrindavan they happen at multiple places uh, there is in kurukshetra there is in dwarka there is in other places also that's why i broadly call it as outside vrindavan and the mood of balram in relationship with krishna is very different inside and outside vrindavan just as the mood of krishna himself is different in vrindavan and outside vrindavan so we will focus initially on the past times in vrindavan now while krishna and balaram have a age gap between them and the exact narrative of how balram is born itself is a little involved i won't go into that it's a quite a remarkable story uh, about how exactly he appears so but the point is that balram is older to krishna sometimes if two two siblings are twins you know then one of them may be born just maybe 10 seconds or 1 minute earlier than the other but that sibling who is born one minute earlier say i am the elder sibling they often have that that tendency that not the silly pride but that sense of identity so now that is very much there throughout the vraja dealings that balram is seen always as the more responsible child and krishna is seen as the more mischievous child not irresponsible but mischievous hmm. so however when they are growing up it is described that the difference between the two of them is not so prominent initial hmm. so that's why i said there's a mystery over there if we look at it in terms of the appearance days it's just about 6 7 days difference now technically samacharya said there's actually one year difference which makes sense because uh, at one level Um, there is a difference between their ages but when they grow up it's almost as if they are growing up together their namakaran also happens together so in some ways the age gap is not that much between them so i won't go into that part because that will be a whole class in itself but essentially there is a there is an age difference but in their growing up they grow up very similar so their the name giving happens together and then they when they live together they are stay in the crutches next to each other and when the child is growing up it's fascinating that how children start understanding the world around them now of course the lord is omniscient and he doesn't under, need to understand anything but when he's playing a leela at that time he also grows goes through those particular flavors and those particular moods and behaviors so when he then they are both growing up 
at that time when that namakaran is done see in the developmental psychology of a child when does a child actually identify itself with its name isn't it we may say this is the name of the child but the child is too small to understand this is my name so what happens is the child the child is lying in a room and then as soon as the door opens then the child looks okay what is this has somebody come over here initially the child may not also be aware but initially what happens is although they are given the name krishna and balaram we sometimes refer to especially in the bhagavatam he is referred to by ram primarily more often than balaram in the sanskrit so krishna and ram so initially when they are called mother yashoda comes and krishna how are you krishna and when she says krishna both of them turn their heads and when rohini comes and says ram both of them turn their heads because they have not yet identified that oh this is krishna is by name and ram is there and they both of them turn their head and they both of them are expecting that they'll come and then says krishna and ram is also expecting he comes and picks up krishna and in ram is called krishna is also expecting but she comes and picks up ram and slowly they start understanding oh krishna is my name and ram is his name so that way right from childhood they are extremely close to each other and sometimes we may we may grow in the same neighborhood and we may our houses may some some friend and house may be close to each other so while krishna and balram they grow in the same house and they are almost like twins the like twins grow up together the age gap and everything is not much different their whole upbringing is very similar so like that for krishna and balram both of them grow up almost as if they are like twins they have separate mothers so obviously they are not twins but they grow up like that and then as they are growing up in the early childhood we especially in the 10th canto it is focused on krishna so krishna's past times are described more and more like so for example krishna is the target of putana krishna is the target for trunavart all these demons come and quite often the emotions say of yashoda are described yashoda is so horrified when she is she just keeps krishna down for a moment and a storm comes and krishna disappeared where is krishna where is krishna she is in anxiety now if a child is lost mother will be in great anxiety and if the child is found normally the mother will be free from anxiety but she see where is krishna where is krishna and then the brajwas is also searching and mother brajwas says he is up there had she sees krishna high up and the demon holding him it, her anxiety goes further higher it shoots up so her emotions are described at this time but most of the time balram's emotions are not described over there so it is because the childhood past times the early childhood past times the kaumar and before that is all associated with primarily the vatsalya bhav so balram's role starts coming in a little later when the pauganda the, the age between 5 to 10 comes up so still balram is very much there uh, in the childhood also so for example when <coughs> they decide that okay in gokul there's a lot of danger so we have to move out of gokul and they decide to go to vrindavan from there so the rajwasis are concerned and it is not a small distance and they have to relocate their entire home and rebuild things transfer things so that they all use bullock carts for that purpose so in vrindavan there are no chariots chariots come the first chariot that comes in vrindavan is the chariot of akrur at least the first means the first that comes after krishna is born so so they use bullock carts and move forward and krishna and balaram they sit on their mother's laps on tall bullock carts so because they are just like there may be many chariots but some chariots are more majestic than others 
Mahati Syandane Sthitav. It is described about the chariot on which Krishna and Arjuna were situated. So like that, when the Vrajivasis are traveling, then Krishna and Balaram, both of them are sitting with their mothers on a chariot, on their mother's lap. But they're on a, not a chariot, on a bullock cart. That bullock cart is the highest among all the bullock carts. So Krishna and Balaram, both of them are enjoying. This is the first time in their life, actually they have gone outdoors. So they have gone out in the sense that uh, they, they play outside the home. Like when the newborn baby is there, parents are a little careful about taking the child outside. You know, they will take it out very carefully so the child is not exposed to danger. Now Krishna has been taken by Trunavat, Krishna has been taken by Putana initially. But otherwise, they have not gone out so much. So Krishna is extremely curious. Hey, what is this bird, Mama? What is this tree? What is this thing happening over there? What is this over there? And Krishna is asking and Mother Yashoda is answering and Rohini is wondering why is Balram not asking anything? Hmm. So Balram is simply watching. Balram is smiling. So Balram, right from his childhood, is more like the wise elder. He's also listening to what Krishna is asking and what Mother Yashoda is replying. So naturally, if there are two children, there's always a little comparison. Parents say that I love all my children equally. But it doesn't work like that. We may, in terms of emotions, there's always a little more attraction, a little less attraction. In terms of dedication, the parents may be dedicated to each child. All the children. But there is a slight difference. So now, naturally, Mother Yashoda's affection is for Krishna. Devaki's affection is for Balram. Mm -hmm. But they both care for each other. So, uh, when, say, when two, brother, uh, two, two siblings are growing up, if two twins are growing up, then the distinctiveness in their personality, what is the difference? Parents also have to evaluate. How do we identify? Otherwise, for, uh, for new people, it's very, if the twins are identical, it's very difficult to identify. So then we have to look at the personality. Sometimes the physical features will be very similar. In Krishna and Balram, the physical features are different, but their natures also are significantly different. So now, as they are growing up, when they come to <coughs> from Gokul to Vrindavan, uh, in the Kaumara Leela, that is the time when Balram's role starts becoming a little more significant. Initially, Mother Yashoda says that Krishna, I cannot let Krishna go out. So, he says, even at home, there are so many demons over here. If I take, let Krishna go out, how many dangers will be there? The world is filled with so many dangers. I cannot let Krishna go out. Now, Krishna is eager to go out. And Nanda Maharaj also is on Krishna's side. They are small children, they are small but they are not always innocent. So, okay, they are innocent, but they also are intelligent. So, small kids soon learn, you know, what to ask their mother and what to ask their father. And they know what things the mother will say yes to, and then they will first ask the mother, and the father will have to go along, because the father doesn't want to go against the mother. And what thing the father will say yes to, they will ask the father first. And then the mother will have to reluctantly say yes, because the father has said yes. So, Krishna asks Nanda Baba, I want to go out, I want to take care of the cows, I want to do what you are doing. And that is what Nanda Maharaj wants his son to do. He wants his son to become responsible, that is their profession. He wants him to learn it and he's happy. Yes, you can do that. And Krishna is so happy, Krishna hugs Nanda Baba and he goes away. And then Nanda Baba thinks, why is he so happy? Okay. And then he thinks, oh, no, he's up to something now. So then, Krishna comes back, uh, will you please tell Ashwadamai also that I will be going with you? Oh, then the Baba understands. <laughs> so, the Maharaj says, no. So, Ashwadamai says, no, he cannot go. And then, Krishna is very upset, no, you promised me I should, I'll go. All my friends have started going, how can I not go? Then, then the Baba has to think what to do. She is trying to pacify, he is trying to pacify Yashoda, but her concerns are there and real. In one sense, becoming a parent, 
means especially as a mother it's like anxiety is a part of the job description itself <laughs> there is always anxiety about the well being of the child so there nanda baba says actually i see there are there is, is what yashoda mai feels is this child sometimes this child goes into danger and sometimes danger comes to the child so it is both ways <laughs> so there dangers will come but the child is also mischievous and because this child is mischievous child goes into danger if danger comes we can't do anything about it but what we can do is at least ensure that the child doesn't go into danger so therefore then and the baba says that you know ram is very responsible so if ram will go out he will take care of krishna and krishna you should listen to your brother now krishna says immediately yes now krishna is going to do what he is going to do but he says yes and so it is because yashoda mai trusts balram she lets krishna go see there is a difference between love and trust while they are similar there is love and there is trust there are many people whom we may trust but that does not necessarily mean we love them like if we are going to do some surgery we trust the doctor but that does not mean we love the doctor <laughs> on the other hand say parents love their children uh, but is but does that mean the parents trust the children not necessarily the child is small the child is not it not you can't say is untrustworthy is not it grown up enough to be trustworthy the children are not going to give the give the parents are not going to give key, key to the treasury or key, give some money to the children in large quantities so there is a slight difference between love and trust it is significant so mother yashoda loves krishna but she trusts balram so that trustworthiness of balram is what helps krishna to get out of the home and the balram also feels a sense of responsibility that because mother yashoda is trusting she always has to keep an eye on krishna and while krishna knows that balram is keeping an eye on me but krishna also knows that balram is also fun loving so initially the first time when krishna decides to steal butter balram says what are you doing you should be stealing butter says, come on don't be such a spoil sport let's spoil let's steal butter says, no 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 you should not be doing this so but then now it's one thing krishna has been stealing butter in their own homes and if it's in one's own home you can't even call it as stealing butter really it's taking from your own home only but when krishna goes outdoors and starts stealing butter from outdoors from somebody else's home that is balram you said you can't do that come on let go on this don't be such a spook. so krishna says come somehow reluctantly balram comes along and then they go and they steal butter you have to sneak in without anyone be seeing and then they eat the butter and they see monkeys are coming and they give the butter to the monkeys and then they run away and then krishna says to balram wasn't that fun now balram is also a child is the elder brother but still the child he wants to say yes and he also wants to say no because if he he says no then he won't be able to have that fun and it was fun going around and stealing brother stealing butter but if he says uh, yes then krishna will do it all the more and maybe krishna will do it without him and he is supposed to keep krishna in check so it is the nature of krishna that krishna enjoys and puts everyone in tension <laughs> so krishna has his fun especially in vrindavan leela it is very rare that krishna is in anxiety that is one of the differences between say krishna in vrindavan and krishna in the world normally in the world people who are in anxiety go to god and god frees them from anxiety but in vrindavan it is krishna puts everyone into anxiety so <laughs> so it is normally people pray to god in vrindavan people pray for god 
<laughs> they pray that Krishna should not get into some trouble. If Krishna gets into some trouble, then someone should protect him. And he should be protected. So, like Krishna is here and there is danger. So, sometimes danger comes to Krishna, sometimes Krishna goes into danger. And the Vrajvasis are praying, let Krishna be protected. So, Balram is caught in between. See, danger also means some fun. So, should I have the fun or should I be protected? So, this is how Krishna has that special relationship with Balramji. And now in Vrindavan, what is Balramji known by name? Dauji. Yes, Dauji is the elder brother. So, Krishna is called a Dauji ka bhaiya, Krishna ka nahiya, as you say. So, then as they are growing up, now there are some pastimes in which Balram plays a more prominent role than others. Mm -hmm. I, we will not just go into a list of the pastimes. We are trying to focus on understanding that relationship. Now, most of the Vrindavan pastimes, there is not much for us to learn. These are to relish. See, it's sometimes we so have some life lessons from Ramayana. I have written the books like that. Other devotees also written life lessons from the Bhagavatam. Now, it's very difficult to draw life lessons from Krishna Leela and Vrindavan. The only life lesson is we have to give up this life and go into that life. <laughs> Isn't it? That is so supremely enjoyable. Because it's more playful. Of course, we can draw life lessons, but it's more the sweetness of the relationship between Krishna and his devotees there. And that sweetness is meant to draw our heart to him. So now as Krishna is growing in Vrindavan, there are various pastimes which he does. If you see Krishna's pastimes, in Krishna Leela, it is primarily with three characters. One is with the demons, the other is with the Vrajavasis and the third is with the Devatas. Hmm? The broadly three characters, three kinds of characters. Now, Kaliya is a demon. Kaliya is not a demon sent by Kamsa. He is a resident demon. <laughs> he is not a guest demon. He is a resident demon. Hmm? So, but there are there are this, broadly these three characters, kinds of characters with whom Krishna is interacting. Now, generally speaking, when Krishna is interacting with the Devatas, say in Brahma Vimohan Leela or in Govardhan Leela, in none of these, Balram plays a very prominent role. But let's see the flavor in which Balram is acting. So, if we consider in Brahma Vimohan Leela, what does Krishna do? Krishna expands himself as the gopas and the cows which Balara, which Brahma has stolen away. And now on that day, it is Balram's birthday. So it's today only that particular day. So that's why Balram has not gone. So in one sense, going out into the forest is like play. But in another sense, it is also like work for them. Hmm? So on that day, Rohini says, no, you should not go. You should give charity to the Brahmanas. You should stay at home. You should be decorated. You should be bathed. Uh, so Balram doesn't go. And that's why what Krishna has done, Balram doesn't know. So now Krishna can act in such a way. So, so this shows that actually Krishna can make an illusion that can even take in Balram. So Balram, he represents the Guru Tattva. He is the person closest to Krishna. But even that person can be deceived. So this is the, while Balram and Krishna are non-different, Krishna does emphasize his supreme position. It's like in the Mohini Murti Lila, Lord Shiva is considered Dhirottama. He is the most sober person. And he cannot be bewildered by anyone. And yet, Mohini Murti bewilders him. So, Balramji cannot be bewildered by anyone. But even Balram is bewildered here. And then, still, when he sees at one particular time how much the calves are feeling irresistible attraction 
towards their cows the cows we know that past time when the gopas are with the cows on top of the hill and krishna with the cows is going below the hill and the cows suddenly start running towards their cows and they are running with such force we normally cows are not very very fierce or strong or disruptive cre- creatures and the cow herd men are trained to restrain the cows but at this particular point they are just not able to restrain and the cows run towards the cows and offer the milk so this is a unusual thing but this unusual thing for the gopas so what which is unusual for the gopas it is frustrating hmm but for balaram it is illuminating it is thought provoking hey what's happening aha uh-huh. he starts thinking and he says oh okay this is actually krishna who has expanded so krishna sometimes takes in balram also into his illusion sometimes he tells balram what is going to do sometimes he doesn't tell what he is going to do so this is where in this particular past time balram understands it before everyone else but that's how krishna acts now especially krishna has relationships with everyone even with the gopas when he is playing balram is the elder and balram is the authority but it's like balram is the authority but balram lets krishna be the center so actually nanda maharaj is the third among the five brothers who are there and the eldest brother is upanand and he is expected to be the next king but upanand says that actually nanda he is the most capable so let him be the king so similarly balaram so what upananda does to nanda so balaram does to krishna balaram is elder but balaram lets krishna be in the center and krishna of course naturally attractive he is actually the center of everything so now but because balaram is the elder brother sometimes there is some tension so every day now as krishna starts growing a little older then the the purva bhav purva bhav is the um, the affection between the gopis and krishna before they come to puberty before they actually start experiencing madhurya bhav so that is called as purva bhav so just like when they when boys and girls when they are small children they might just play with each other but as they grow older as they come into their teens then that awareness starts coming up and then some level of gender separation is required so when the purva bhav starts awakening so now krishna and the gopis are both of them are attracted to each other but it is a traditional conservative society so krishna and gopis cannot freely interact with each other so every day when krishna goes out at that time all of vrindavan comes out to see krishna so the elder gopas and gopis come out of their homes and they follow krishna the younger gopis go up to the terraces of their homes most of the houses in vrindavan are like one story so there is ground and there is upper story they go up there and from there they are beholding krishna and everybody keeps following krishna with their eyes till krishna just becomes a speck in the horizon and disappears and normally there are different ways in which leadership and responsibility is shown so for example a kshatriya who is leading an army should be in front to show the courage and give confidence but a cow herd who is taking care of cows has to be behind because from behind you can see which cow is going where now krishna stays the last 
He is the last because he wants to take care, take care of every single cow. And Balram is with Krishna. So, Dina Pariksha, as the gopis say, at the end of the day, when Krishna and Balram come back, so all the cows come and before the cows start coming, a dust cloud starts rising. And just by the rising of the dust cloud, the Vrajvasis understand, now Krishna is coming. And they are eager and waiting. And with the dust cloud in the, in the cows, they get a little glimpse of Krishna. And then Krishna comes closer and closer. Now, as they enter, now how it is, is if you consider Vrindavan, the Vrindavan has multiple meanings. It's like, at one level Vrindavan is the village. But in another level, Vrindavan is also the forest, which is much bigger. And there are 12 forests in Vrindavan. So now, say they go out and this is the path for going out and coming in. So Nanda Maharaj's home is right in the center. It is at the center of the village. So when Krishna comes back, so all the gopis, the younger gopis, all the homes that are there along the way, even if it is not their home, they go to their friends' homes. And they are watching from there, eagerly waiting for Krishna to come. Now what happens is, uh, when Krishna and Balram are coming, so now as they come in, they enter into the village, the cows are also, the cows, initially when in the forest, they want to go here, they go there, go there, and they have to be pulled backwards. They have to be pulled or pushed to make sure that they are on the path. But once they come into the village, then the cows also become eager. We want to go to our mothers. We want to go. So they start running. And as they start running, they start going faster inside. And now Balram is also eager. Let's go home. And then our mothers will have made some food for us. We'll take a bath. We'll take food. So Balram wants to go very quickly. And suddenly... Krishna starts going very slowly. And Balram says to Krishna, Krishna, come on, let's go faster. And Krishna says, I am tired, I can't go fast. If you want, you can go ahead. Sure, let's go quickly now. No, no, you go ahead. And then Balram goes ahead. And when Balram goes ahead, then Krishna feels liberated. Why liberated? Then Krishna can look at all the gopis on the terraces. With Balram as the elder brother, Krishna feels restrained. I cannot look at them. <laughs> so there the gopis offer the love of their heart to Krishna through their eyes. And Krishna offers the love of his heart to Balram, to, sorry, to the gopis through his glances. And that's why twice in the gopi Gita, the gopis refer to Krishna's love-filled glances that Viharanam Chate No, he says Prema Vikshanam So, Ikshanam is to look at but Vikshanam is like a side glance. So, all, so Krishna, because it's a traditional society, Krishna cannot just stare at the gopis. So, Krishna often offers side glances to the gopis. And those side glances are very endearing for the gopis. So they say, these side glances, they conquer our heart. So Balram has his various roles to play. And now, sometimes Krishna arranges, even for his devotees, to be, in some ways, play some role that acts like an obstacle. So the whole arrangement of Parkiras is so that there is greater intensity in the excitement of love. So generally if there is a movie in which say the hero and the heroine meet and they meet and nobody opposes them. There is no villain, there is no family opposition, there is no circumstance of misunderstanding. Just meet and they sing and dance and then they live happily ever after. Well, none of the audience will be happy. Why? Because if there is, it will just be boring. See, generally, if there is no tension, then there is no attention. <laughs> Normally, there has to be some tension. 
say if you are hearing a class and you already know what is the next point that is going to be spoken maybe you heard that from that devotee many times and that devotee keeps giving the same classes at different times then it becomes boring but when there is tension oh some excitement i don't know what is going to happen next then there is excitement there is attention so sometimes krishna arranges for his devotees to play roles that are slightly opposed so when there is tension then there is attention so they say jatila and kutila they are playing that role primarily jatila and kutila are they are living in raval and they are the part of radharani's family after, afterwards so they oppose and so the point over here is that balram also plays that role sometimes not knowingly not intentionally but unknowingly so that's his interaction with the with the brajwasi so i said that krishna has interactions with three of these characters so i talked about how he is interacting he plays some role in devtas how with brajwasis now there is one particular demon with whom krishna uh, with in the interaction with him balram plays a prominent role who is that dhenukasur so dhenukasur bhanjana it is described that it is dhenukasur is primarily killed by balram ji now krishna also is there krishna is killing some subordinate demons so there are sometimes when balram ji also become the center in dealing with the demons but most of the times it is krishna who is doing these things now uh, as they are moving forward when akruras akrura comes that is a time of big transition for them now when they go krishna promises the gopis i will come back and krishna has full intention of coming back but then what happens is that the, the yadus they tell krishna you killed kamsa but there is initially they actually use three four different lines of argument first they say you belong to us it was the eighth son of vasudev who was supposed to kill kamsa and you killed kamsa therefore you are actually son of vasudev and krishna says no i belong to nanda mahal and ishoda they are my parents so now of course krishna plays leela over there but krishna says, I, i want i need to go back to them he says no 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 you are their son and then they say actually that particular argument sometimes when we want to persuade someone we use multiple arguments and then when we are listening we are speaking and they are listening then we are also observing which argument they are listening to which argument is registering and then we may elaborate on that argument so then they say krishna you killed kamsa you protected us from one danger but you have put us in double danger now. there are friends of kamsa who will come to revenge and there are enemies of kamsa those whom kamsa has persecuted in the past now they will come to plunder the kingdom so you have to stay here and that is the argument which krishna cannot refuse so now in one sense krishna is god but in other sense krishna is just a 10 year old child over here and suddenly he is taken out from one home from everything that he knows and he just has to stay at another place and at that time what happens is the brajwasis are so close to him that the, those are the people he has grown up with those are the people whom he knows whom he loves and the yadus are at least in the narrative as given by jiva goswami in the gopal champu it's almost like the non brajwasi especially the yadus they are cast as slightly like villains because every every drama need some people who are opposite they're not villains but they are cast like villains and what happens is they are very afraid that krishna should not go back to vrindavan and that is why they strongly disapprove whenever krishna talks starts talking about vrindavan and children are very impressionable and nanda maharaj also told krishna that no respect for sudev and respect for sudev just like you respect me and follow him and that means also respect those who are connected with sudev so krishna just cannot speak about vrindavan to anyone the only constant in his life 
at that time is balram now of course rohini also comes back uh, but she is older and when she tries so initially krishna and balram are together and krishna pours his heart out to balram he says you know i i want i long to be in vrindavan i want to talk about the prajivasis but i can't talk with anyone so krishna and balram in now they are in the royal assembly they are in the royal palaces so they have separate rooms to stay in. but krishna and balram stay together and they stay they come together they stay together and krishna pours his heart out to balram and balram consoles krishna now the yadus are not so worried about balram because it's wrong from the beginning that balram is the son of vasudev he was temporarily given for uh, caretaking to rohini was sent there and rohini is known to be balram's wife so her son is obviously no sorry rohini is known to be balram's mother vasudev's wife so her son is he belongs to the yadus so oh, now balram tries to console when vasudev sees that krishna is respecting devaki but a child a small 10 year old child is suddenly told you know this is not your mother this is your mother treat her like your mother you know, krishna respects devaki but he is not able to call her and deal with her like a mother so vasudev sees that and vasudev says let's call rohini back at least there will be someone more familiar and rohini maybe can tell us can krishna will be comfortable with her and then maybe krishna will start connecting with us more so rohini comes back and when rohini comes krishna and balram both of them run and they hug her legs and they start pouring out their hearts and then rohini says i'll talk with the ritual the yadus and she tries to tell them how much the prajwasis love krishna and how much krishna loves the prajwasis and the yadus start saying on whose side are you you know you went to vrindavan what did the prajwasis do you know, do they feed you with such milk sweet that you forget whose side you are on and they start chastising her only and when that starts happening rohini says i cannot do anything now so then krishna and balram alone are together and then uh, when vasudev sees that okay krishna and balram are growing up he says let's send them to the gurukul now and then when they leave mathura when they come to the guru's ashram now guru's ashram is in a forest and for krishna and balram being in a forest is remembering reminding them of vrindavan these sometimes people say being spiritual means you have to live in villages it's not like that even in krishna lila there are rural places and there are urban places mathura is a proper city and vrindavan is a village so krishna grew up so it's the important thing is what are we doing in a rural place or a urban place and the pandavas convert a forest into a flourishing metropolis and that is considered to be the mercy of krishna that is indraprastha from kanda but the point is that for krishna when they go in a forested area that reminds them of vrindavan and krishna and balram they attend their classes they learn everything but after that now in the gurukul gurukul is not like a big place it's they have small quarters and they stay together and krishna and balram they hug each other and krishna they talk about vrindavan and how the places in the gurukul are reminding them of vrindavan and jiva goswami says both of them bathe each other in their tears and krishna is in tears and balram also is in tears so this is the time when they in one sense come closest to each other they are in a new place and they are in a new place is they are trying to develop a relationship with their guru with other students over there but they have shared memories they have a shared past and so so from vrindavan it is a long time their mathura for a relatively short time and after that they come to the guru's ashram where is the guru's ashram which place is his ashram avanti avanti is ujjain now modern day ujjain so there krishna and balram their bond becomes the closest now till this point they have not really taken up any significant royal responsibilities krishna and balram both fight against chamur and mushtik and the whole set of demons but they have not 
taken up royal responsibilities then after that they come back to mathura and there are many dangers and krishna protects uh, mathura vasis from all the dangers especially from one demon who seems to attack many many times who is that jarasand and then krishna takes a drastic decision krishna says that these demons are coming again and again they are protecting them but now krishna wants to ensure that the brajuva the yadus yadus don't need him or depend on him constantly for protection so krishna is growing up krishna is recognizing that i have to take okay, krishna is recognizing that i have to take responsibilities across many places so it's like if if some somebody becomes the say somebody becomes the prime minister of the country then initially they have to be there to make sure things are moving forward somebody becomes the president of a temple they have to be there to make sure things are moving but prabhupa said the best management is where everything is going forward everything is running smoothly and the manager doesn't have to be running here and there so if the manager is running everything here and there nothing is running smoothly that is a terrible management but the best is where thing systems are made in place so krishna decides that i need to have a system in place for the protection of the yadus i cannot be here constantly for them and to have a system in place he decides to change the place itself he takes them he shifts the entire yadus and their everything from mathura to dwarka and this is a extraordinary move in one sense because dwarka is far far away from every all other places it's said to be like island in the ocean and an island can offer extraordinary protection generally whenever attacks are to be done if there is land the pass through passage from the land then it's relatively easy to go that's why although ravan was so powerful ravan knew that i have made enemies everywhere and he did say he could have conquered any place he could have made his kingdom in swarga also now he chose kuvera kuvera had the place called lanka now he chose it because it was prosperous but also because it is an island so that he would be safe he could go around and cause danger to everyone but nobody when he came back nobody would cause danger to him or so he thought now he didn't figure out that somebody would build a bridge and go all the way so no so, so so something which is like protected by a island protected like an island with no direct access way by land that is very safe and that's one of the reasons that among all the, in the europeans there was always a tussle for power britain rose to power because it is an island it's very difficult for other powers to attack and that's one of the reasons why america is so powerful it's very difficult for anyone to attack america because it's surrounded by oceans from all sides so anyway so krishna made a very strategically sound decision and after that the only, only once while vrindavan demons were coming constantly while outside vrindavan there were invaders coming constantly but in dwarka there was only one major attack which was that there's a demon named shalva he came and he had got a airplane by worshiping lord shiva and by that only he was able to attack otherwise they were safe over there now when they were safe so i will talk about uh, three key incidents because we could go on into a lot more in detail but i'll focus on three incidents to illustrate how balram ji's roles vary so one of the puzzling things about balram let, let's first complete the vrindavan part and then we'll move on to other things so now while krishna is in mathura the rajwasis are never far away from his mind and he still has hopes that i'll go back to vrindavan but krishna doesn't go back now do the rajwasis come to meet him because krishna wants to protect the rajwasis so he tells them the maharaj initially when he decides to stay in mathura that we have to act as if we have no relationship with each other as if vrindavan was just a place where i want to went to stay because my father was in danger but i didn't develop any bonds in vrindavan and that way my enemies won't target you 
if they come to know how close you are to me then they will naturally target you like when ravan wanted to target ram get back at ram for having killed karadushan and his entire regiment and for having disfigured churpanka what did ravan do he targeted sita because he thought ram and sita are very close to each other so like that krishna was concerned that the demons will target the prajwasis and that's why krishna said there will be no contact between us i will not come there you will not come here and even when messengers had to be sent nand mahadev sent messenger with some sweets and some gifts that they have to be disguised they should not be seen as prajwasis so but the prajwasis were very much in the mind of krishna and krishna couldn't go back till all the demons were killed or especially those demons who were primarily targeting him mm. they were killed and that's why krishna couldn't go back the prajwasis were always in his mind so while he was in mathura he sent one person to give a message to the prajwasis who was that uddhava and uddhava gave a message of expressing krishna's love for the prajwasis that's a whole beautiful story and uddhava said krishna will come soon krishna has promised and now soon is a very indefinite word is it soon can mean one minute soon can mean one hour soon can mean one year hmm. so uddhava is asking krishna krishna you i promised the rajwasi that you are going to come back soon when are you going to go krishna says i want to go but i can't i can't because i don't want to bring de- 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 danger to the prajwasis so then because uddhava is so concerned krishna is also concerned so krishna says uddhava can you go again and give a message that the at i go to come soon uddhava says last time only they were so displeased with me now i will have zero credibility with them they see me only they will get angry you are a liar the previously only what uh, radharani had spoken indirectly is to uddhava is she was speaking to a bumblebee but she was actually speaking to uddhava you are the unreliable servant of an unreliable master so they say they are already suspecting my loyalty so now they don't want to listen to me then who can we send and then immediately krishna uddhava both look at balram and they say balram he says you are the elder brother you have authority if you go and tell then they will accept it so now this back story is not told in the 10th canto of the bhagavatam it said balram suddenly gets a desire balram desires to go to vrindavan and he leaves for vrindavan that's how it is described and it is true it is krishna's desire it is also balram's desire so when balram goes to vrindavan now the yadus also don't oppose balram going because they have no fear that balram may stay there forever they have a fear that if krishna goes to vrindavan yad gatvan ani vartante he will go there he will never come back so then balram goes to give to convey the love of krishna to the prajwasis and that's one of the most intimate services so normally we can send as a messenger anyone we can just send a letter but if we send a person as a messenger then there is a gravity to that and normally if somebody goes as a messenger it is a going as a messenger is not a very big thing messenger job is not a very big job it's an important job but it's not a very big job you won't generally send a person who is elder to you as a messenger so when later on krishna will go as the shanti dot he will go with the peace proposal that just shows the gravity of the peace proposal that is being offered similarly when balram goes over here now because balram is elder krishna does not give a written message but hmm? he tells balram he just convey to the prajwasis now balram goes there and balram he talks about krishna tells about krishna's wonderful pastimes and now here there is something much more that has happened which is going to cause further concern to the prajwasis 
because the news of krishna's adventures keeps trickling to vrindavan after some time but keeps trickling to vrindavan so first balram gets married and balram is known to be a kshatriya so he will go get married to a kshatrayani that's expected but when balram gets married nanda maharaj's heart start quaking ishoda maharaj's heart start quaking whom will krishna marry if krishna marries a kshatriya princess that means krishna is acknowledging or krishna is accepting that i am a kshatriya if krishna comes back to vrindavan and marries one of the gopis in vrindavan or marries the gopis then krishna will accept that krishna is accepting that he belongs to us he is one of among us so the the vrajwasi are worried and then what happens krishna doesn't just marry krishna marries 16108 queens and there with each news of krishna's marriage it like there is joy but there is agony that is getting married it's wonderful but the more he is married the more queens he has there is less chance that he will come back to us so the vrajwasi is especially the gopis are very despondent the vrajwasi in jangal are despondent because oh krishna belongs to vinda does not belong to vindavan that's what essentially he is saying and the gopis are especially despondent so then when balram has to come back and he has to convey a message so it is it's a very difficult situation krishna's actions seem to be showing as if he doesn't care for the rajwasis at all and his actions are saying something opposite how does he tell the rajwasis that krishna loves you and krishna loves you more than anything else so it's a very difficult task and it is balram who performs that task so now of course balram has his gopis in vrindavan also and he performs a rasleela with those gopis and in krishna leela it is described that there are two ways the in madhuri ras krishna leela is enjoyed so that the gopis who perform madhuri ras pastimes with krishna and the manjaris who observe the pastimes so now the gopis when balram is performing the when balram is performing rasleela with his gopis krishna's gopis get to experience the manjari bhav so the, the gopis perform past time the manjaris observe past times and the manjari bhav is sometimes considered higher because the gopis love krishna and the gopis also love those whom krishna loves so what happens is in like say if you are watching a movie hmm, then how much we enjoy the movie depends on how much we can identify with the characters if all the characters are behaving in such strange ways and the characters are so strange that we can't identify with any character then the movie starts becoming boring yes we can't connect with it and the more characters we can identify with the more we get immersed in the movie see if the villain is completely dark and black and bad then we don't identify with the villain at all we only want that villain should be get beaten up beaten up and destroyed but if the villain also has a back story where the villain is also a good person who has become bad then why the villain is doing what is doing we also understand that we can identify with that so the point is that the more characters we can identify with in a movie the more we get immersed in the movie so what happens is when say krishna is in uh, is having past times with radharani so when the manjaris are there the manjaris observe so the manjaris because they are female and radharani is female they can identify with the with radharani or with the gopis but because they love krishna so much they can identify with krishna also so they identify with both and that's why they can experience the love and the joy of krishna leela from both perspectives mm-hmm. and so the gopis they enjoy past times with krishna but when balram comes they get to experience the manjari bhav over there and in that way balram gives to the gopis something very special so the gopis are seeing balram but they are remembering krishna and they experience that's how 
the gopis are satisfied when balram comes there and balram performs past times and then balram stays there for two months and then he departs and then when he departs so that is one key role that he plays so i don't so we will just take uh, one or two more past times now one major source of confusion is balram's relationship with duryodhan so here there are many incidents in it but the seeds of that are sown in vrindavan itself like say balram sometimes plays a slightly adversarial role i mean krishna wants to be to be looking at the gopis and beholding them and they are beholding him balram is seen as a slight obstacle so balram plays that particular role <coughs> so balram's relationship with duryodhan on one side and balram's relationship with krishna on the other side so how do we understand this so the idea here is that there are many ways to understand this but i'll, I'll just focus on some of those ways mm -hmm. so i'll talk about it in one sense from the perspective of krishna's relationship with balram and another perspective is balram's relationship with duryodhan so now when krishna and balram are there there they are together but there is a viryaras viryaras means at sometimes somebody opposes krishna like bhishma shooting arrows at krishna is said to be in viryaras and those who oppose krishna they also give some pleasure to krishna by their opposition so balram plays that role of opposing krishna and in that way by opposing krishna he in one sense gives krishna an opportunity to clarify and elaborate on the rationale for his actions so now krishna krishna is friends with arjuna so what happens is we'll talk about uh, three incidents in this particular dynamic one is with subhadra then <coughs> the second is with um, like before the war and the last will be at the end of the war so now with respect to subhadra's wedding or before that her marriage is to be decided with whom so balram has developed some affection for duryodhan now we may say why would balram develop affection for duryodhan so at one level it is his causeless compassion on duryodhan at another level duryodhan is also he may be evil but he is not necessarily foolish the duryodhan has the capacity to endear himself to others so that's how he gets karana on his side so he gives karana a kingdom when he needs him and karana feels so grateful and he says what can i do for you you have saved my honor in my time of need and what does duryodhan say duryodhan doesn't say you know i want you to fight for me when i am in need duryodhan speaks word that conquer karana's heart at that time he says i don't want anything from you except your friendship and in the way dil jeet liya tumne so like that karana is knocked out he is not only giving me such honor but he is treating me like a friend and he wants me as his friend see at this point karana is a unknown person who has almost like gate crashed into the uh, exhibition military ex martial exhibition and he is and duryodhan is one of the central persons he is the prince so that key person say if we are coming for a program is one among hundreds of people sitting and then the speaker recognizes oh welcome to this program then it's like it's very special to be noticed so like that karana is given special attention and duryodhan wins him over so duryodhan has those smarts now of course balram cannot be deceived but balram as a part of his leela to serve krishna through viryaras he opposes him so he develops a relationship with duryodhan 
and he even teaches Duryodhana how to fight with the mace. So now when this happens at that particular time, uh, Balram wants Subhadra to be married to Duryodhana, and Krishna say Krishna wants Subhadra to be married to Arjuna. Now of course Arjuna comes over there, and Arjuna and Subhadra they meet each other. So they all. Are you able to hear me behind? Okay. So Subhadra said so they also develop a affection for each other, and then Krishna tells Arjuna, "This is quite a radical thing. You know, it's like a brother telling somebody to abduct his sister and take her away." So Krishna does that for many reasons. He sees that Subhadra is actually she likes Krishna Arjuna much more than Duryodhan, and also he wants. So Krishna is God, and Krishna can exhibit his omnipotence, and he can protect Arjuna. But at a practical level, Krishna wants to support Arjuna. Krishna wants Arjuna to have alliances. He wants the Pandavas to become stronger. And if a wedding happens, then, and especially of the of a princess like Subhadra, then the bond between the Yadus and the Pandava side will become very strong. So Krishna does that. And initially, Balram is upset, and Balram says, "We will go and punish Arjuna. And how dare he do this?" And Krishna gives various reasons. And finally, Krishna says, "Actually, you saw, you know, Arjuna did not abduct Subhadra. It was Subhadra who was actually driving the chariot. Is it Arjuna was fighting? Subhadra was driving the chariot. So Subhadra wanted to go with him. So then Balram, he accepts it." Not reluctantly, but he accepts it. Now, when Draupadi is dishonored, at that time, that is the time when Shalya is attacking Dwarka. So, what happens is Krishna and Balram are both there for the Rajasuya Yajna, and then they, after that, they leave. They leave because Shalya is attacking over here, not Shalya, Shalva. So, he is attacking. and they defend dwarka and during that time the whole gambling match happens and the pandavas lose everything and then duryodhan so then balram and krishna come to meet the pandavas in the forest and both of them are enraged how how dare something like this be done to the pandav to the pandavas and especially to draupadi and then they console draupadi krishna especially consoles her and krishna stays with the pandavas for some time balram because he has a relationship with duryodhan he says i'll go and meet duryodhan how could he done something like this the pandavas are hoping that balram will make duryodhan see sense but after their vanvas gets over and then everybody meets again at virat where abhimanyu is going to marry uttara so at that time when they are thinking of what to do so balram speaks and balram says yudhishthir you have to be a little humble you no know, actually the situation you are exile and what happened to draupadi it is ultimately your fault it is you who gambled nobody forced you to gamble nobody forced you to put her on the stake you put her on the stake and it is you who got her into trouble so it is not that virtue is on your side over here and all are dismayed to hear this and they realize that duryodhan has been at work now duryodhan has been telling his side of the story see the pandavas are in the forest and the forest they are disconnected from the rest of the world but whatever has happened duryodhan has been meeting people he has been meeting balram he has been meeting others and he is telling his side of the story and that's how he is able to get 11 akshaunis on his side it is not that everybody who comes on his side is an evil person so this actually shows the importance of telling or the necessity of telling our side of the story just because we are right does not mean that everybody will believe we are right but who tells their side of the story that is very important in today's world the word is used narrative So what is the narrative going on in mainstream society? So 
we may be we may bad things may be done to us but if the narrative is different then what happens is we will be thought of as no we are not bad is not happening to us we are only doing bad things so the mainstream narrative in, me, in the media today is that that the majority will always do bad things because the majority has power and the minorities will always be persecuted and so the minorities need to be protected from the majority so minorities are always virtuous the majority is always vicious and that's why when it's a bad thing by done is run by the minority that is downplayed and the bad thing is run by the majority that is highlighted all the time so now we need, we, can, we can complain about this but complaining is not of much use we have to acknowledge this is the way it is and we have to correct the narrative so we have to tell our side of the story and that's why to some extent social media plays a big role the mainstream media is more or less bought and you always tell the tell the leftist narrative only but the the alternative media can help us tell the uh, alternative narrative but the point is that we can say balram it cannot be bewildered but balram is playing a role over here in the leela he is showing we'll talk about it from a transcendental perspective eventually but balram is showing through his actions how if we are not telling our side of the story then even respected people may buy into the other side of the story you know when i was in america i met several american devotees and i was serious devotee very dedicated was i was stunned by the questions they were asking me at least three four devotees in america and two three devotees in uk the local means english devotees they were saying that you know you know how fanatical india is becoming says so first a mosque was destroyed and then on top of that a temple is built and everybody is celebrating that and even the prime minister of india is going and celebrating that so it's a whole celebration of intolerance so i said but you all know it was the supreme court which proved that the mosque was built on top of a temple a temple was destroyed so all oh, that happened in the medieval time that happened hundreds of years ago you know this mosque was destroyed just a few decades ago so they say what happened hundreds of years ago we can't keep correcting that otherwise we will always be replaying the revenge of the past so such thing should not be happening in modern times so what happens is the emotional investment is not there and the way some devotee showed me the articles in new york times or washington post or guardian the way they have built an argument it says is first of all this ramayan and all this is mythology so because it's a mythology you cannot associate with geography now even if you associate with geography what is the evidence that the place you actually consider now is the place which is the actual place where that is it occurred and on top of that even if it were in the place what is the evidence that this is the place where ram appeared there are so many temples and you're just claiming that this is the temple where ram appeared and this is just a excuse by which hundreds and hundreds of mosques will in future be destroyed and temples will be built over there so now the reality is i showed those devotees that there are eight mosques around the ram temple in the nearby premises and even when the ram temple when the agitation was that it speak those mullahs those who are the leaders of the mosque they said nobody threatened our mosques nobody threatened our mosques but they have been worshiping and they have been still allowed to worship so we got a lot the government got a lot of land but without breaking any other mosques and even the mosque that was broken the government itself gave land and another place to build a mosque and that mosque could also have been built by this time but the muslims decided that we want to make this the biggest mosque in all of india first they wanted to make it the biggest mosque in the world now they say we want to make it the biggest mosque in india and nobody is opposing them for that but because they want to make it the biggest mosque they need a lot of funds and because they need a lot of funds that's why that mosque has not been built so my point is that if we don't give the our side of the story now from a americans perspective it does make sense to them you know a mosque was destroyed and you are celebrating the destruction of the basically you are celebrate they say we say we are celebrating the building of a temple but what they think is it's a destruction of a mosque and on top of that you are building something so how narratives come up i knew about it but when people who might think are devotees they are asking these questions i was quite taken aback so there are many reasons for this but this is the power of narrative and it's very important for us to be telling our side of the story 
so anyway moving forward so this is how balram plays a role he plays a role the adversarial role by which krishna gets to clarify krishna gets to emphasize so, so at that time krishna states he says that yudhishthir was actually pressured into playing the match and even if he take draupadi so what they did to draupadi even maids even uh, slaves are to be treated with respect and uh, this is this when megasthenes was a associate of megasthenes or yun se sang or many people who came to india you know megasthenes came with uh, he wrote a book called his indica he came with uh, alexander yun sang was chinese traveler he came now they observed the caste system but they said that what we call as varna ashram everybody was respected everybody in their place had respect so even servants need to be respected so even if yudhishthir was wrong in gambling draupadi but that does not justify what duryodhan and all of them did with draupadi even a maid is not to be dishonored in this way so krishna spoke in the defense and in this way what happens is balram by speaking these things gives krishna the opportunity to speak and correct the narrative so uh, i'll just conclude with a last point what does duryodhan's love for Dur- uh, for his affection for duryodhan convey sorry balram's affection for duryodhan convey this is the only point i'll make about i said that we'll be talking about balram in relationship with krishna and balram in relationship with us so as is so that is balram in the role of a guru so the guru can be causelessly compassionate sometimes the guru may give special mercy to someone even when they don't deserve the mercy in one sense so it is like mahaprabhu made roop and sanatan they you they wanted to be surrender he said no not now later raghunath goswami wanted to surrender he faced so many obstacles he said later later he had to struggle so these were eminently worthy candidates and mahaprabhu made them wait but mahaprabhu gave his mercy to jagan madai very quickly when he was going on south india to north india tour he just embraced people sthan sthan na dekhi na dekhi patra patra he would just give his mercy to everyone so sometimes the lord will give mercy even to the unworthy and sometimes the lord may make even the worthy wait for mercy that's the way he works so the lord is always reciprocal but although he is reciprocal just because he is reciprocal does not mean that it is proportional hmm? that means we cannot say that i have done this much service so krishna you have to give me this much mercy and this person has not done this much service krishna how are you giving more mercy to that person no krishna is reciprocal but that so we do something we come towards krishna krishna will reveal himself to us but it's not mathematical it's not proportional or how much mercy krishna may give to whom that may vary from person to person so the, uh, to illustrate this about the mercy of god there is a story how you know a uh, employer a uh, land owner employs some laborers and when they employ the laborers some people start working from the morning and the land owner goes to a market and he says there are some poor people uh, they are completely desolate in the afternoon he goes so he says you come and work for me and they start working in the second half of the day and at the end of the day when it's time to pay the master gives the same pay to everyone and those who have been working from the morning they say hey, this is unfair this is they work only half of what we did and why are you paying the same though paying them so much so so the master says that's none of your business this is what you were promised i have paid you that how much i pay to someone else that is between me and them so the, the master pays them that much because he sees they are poor and they need that mm-hmm. so this story comes in various places but it's currently most famously associated with the teachings of jesus but there is it's a like an anecdotal tale which comes many places so the point is that the lord's mercy is in that sense causeless now the word causeless is often misunderstood now causeless is not there is no cause 
what causeless means the cause is less what it means is that whatever we do we may do something to attract the mercy but what we do is never enough for the mercy so the example is given of begging if the if somebody begs for arms and somebody gives arms so now one person might beg 10 times and somebody might give them arms another person might just beg once and they might give arms but the begging does not earn the right for the arms so whether it is begging one times or 10 times that cause is always less for the arms the charity that is being given so in that sense the cause is always less so balram demonstrate that causeless mercy that although duryodhan does not deserve it but balram gives the mercy now the important thing is this is a, this is a very important principle the in the upanishads and other places say that that tas, that yes deve tatha guru that just as we have guru in uh, shraddha in guru we have to have shraddha in krishna hmm? tasya ite kathite yartha prakashante mahatmana so now duryodhan he shows a very significant example of there is a bond between him and guru but there is no bond between him and krishna so what happens in such situations if somebody is somehow attached to the guru or the guru is attached to them whichever is guru is not attached but guru is affectionate to them but that person never develops affection for krishna then what happens to them so actually yasya prasadad bhagavat prasadam we say but if somebody doesn't want bhagavat prasad only want yasya prasad only then what happens then that's where personality cult start happening hmm? now in this case that does not happen you uh, know balram is simply giving he is not expecting from duryodhan balram keeps supporting duryodhan but if he not only doesn't become attached to krishna he constantly keeps going against krishna he keeps trying to harm krishna's devotees and eventually krishna arranges through duryodhana through bhish bhima to have duryodhan killed even in seemingly ways that are illegal and bhima duryodhan becomes sorry balram becomes angry at that time and then krishna defends bhima for what he has done and he said okay you are considering this is what he has done wrong but consider the history of all the wrongs that the pandavas have done throughout yesterday evening we had a youth meeting where the whole topic was and uh, like are the pandavas both pandavas did wrong things kaurava did wrong thing but does that both of mean both of them are equal the world of difference between the wrongs so krishna defends so sometimes the guru so krishna defends bhima and he punishes duryodhana so the point is that sometimes the spiritual master may just seem to give a lot of time to someone and the spiritual master may just be affectionate to someone the prabhupad would give a lot of time sometimes to some life members and prabhupad would sometimes be very affectionate towards some devotees and sometimes some of those devotees still left the movement and prabhupad would give them blessings prabhupad would give them empowerment prabhupad would give them roles and responsibilities sometimes they would still leave so how can that happen that if there is no reciprocation we, we cannot disconnect the guru from krishna so if that happens if somebody just connects with the guru and is not even connecting with the guru actually duryodhan is using the guru in one sense now it's balram's causeless mercy that he lets himself uh, he connect lets duryodhan connect with him even at that level but if someone does not connect with krishna or other somebody alienates krishna then that person will ultimately be doomed so guru's mercy is very important but guru's mercy is for what purpose that's important to understand guru's mercy is so that we can become krishna conscious so that we can be connect with krishna uh, one devotee in america he asked me that you know we say this is krishna consciousness but i feel it is only guru consciousness because when you wake up in the morning and come for mangal aarti we are having a song about the guru again guru puja is a song about the guru he said there are no songs about krishna at all he said i said the narsi aarti is there, there but said, yeah it's not about krishna so i told him about vibhavari shesha we have in some temples we have various songs 
people say it's not about Krishna. But then I told him, look at the what is the content of the Guru Puja. It is all about how the Guru is devoted to Krishna. We are not glorifying the Guru independently. So the idea is, while it is samsara davanal, it is not so much worship of the Guru, it is more a remembrance of the model of how we would like to become. That this is, we start our day with a remembrance of the ideal that we aspire to become. How the Guru in every way is immersed in Krishna. So somebody may bond with the Guru, but if that bond with the Guru doesn't translate into a bond with Krishna, then that's not very auspicious. And somebody uses the bond with Guru to stay against Krishna, to go against Krishna, then that person will be doomed. So Balram's mercy is very powerful. If it can come to somebody unworthy like Duryodhan also, then if somebody is worthy, that mercy will come so much more. So that mercy of Balram ji is manifest to us through Srila Prabhupada. In the Gaudiya Vaishnava tradition, uh, before Srila Prabhupada, primarily there would be Gaur Gadadhar deities. So Gaur is Shatani Mahaprabhu, Gadadhar is Radharani. Prabhupada primarily started manifesting or uh, he started worshipping Gaur Nitai. Prabhupada said that Gadadhar is Radharani and see, what happens is it is said that we have various stages of Bhakti. We have Vaidhi Bhakti, then we have Raga Anuga Bhakti, then we have Bhava and Prema Bhakti. So it is said in Vaidhi Bhakti, it is Balaram as the Guru who guides us. And from the Raga Anuga stage onwards, it is we enter into the association of Radharani. In the spiritual world, if we are in the Manjari Bhav, we are guided by Radharani. So, prior to Bhakti Sansa Thakur, most Gaudiya Vaishnavas would worship in the, uh, in the Sahaj Samadhi and all those more internal moods of remembrance. So, in that mood, Gaura Gadadhar is much more appropriate. But because Sahajiaism was becoming so rampant, so Bhakti Sansa Thakur downplayed that. He said, yeah, the Raga Marga is for us to worship. We don't imitate that right now. We, are, we don't prematurely rush into that. So for us, at our, for us, when we are primarily going to the city of Anartha Nivritti, we need the guidance of Balram Ji. We can't rush into the internal pastimes that Krishna does with Radharani. So Prabhupada gave great emphasis. Even Vrindavan, we have Radha Shamsundar, but Prabhupada established Krishna Balaram in the center. That is the idea is, of course, it's Raman Reti, that is the place where Krishna Balaram performed his pastime, but also Prabhupada wanted us that we want Guru and Krishna together. That the Guru will take us toward Krishna and Balramji representing Guru is very important for us in our lives. So let us all pray to Balramji that he attract our heart to him on this sacred day of his appearance day and beyond him or rather through his blessings our heart may also become attracted to Krishna. This way Guru Krishna Prasade Pai Bhakti Lata Beej. So we got that Beej. Let's hope that it can flourish and become the prema lata, the prema phala, that the fruit of love of God will become more and more accessible to us. So I'll quickly summarize. We discussed five main points. We have talked about the Krishna Balram relationship primarily. I talked about how their relationship in Vrindavan. Within that, I talked about their relationship with each other, how they grew up together. And how Balram enabled Krishna to come out of Rindavan at home. He was the protector, he was the guardian. Then we talked about his role in the relationship with the Devatas. How he was put in Moha, but he was the first to come out of Moha. Then we talked about his relationship in the, as the, in the, in the Madhurya Bhav also. How Krishna, he plays some opposing role slightly. And then we talked about with the demons, how sometimes he is also the hero. And then, then we talked about, actually all this you can say is one point, was all about Vrindavan. Then we talked about outside Vrindavan, that Krishna, Balaram, they came close to each other in remembering Vrindavan together. Hmm? And then I talked about how Balaram, he gave the Manjari Bhav experience to the Gop Krishna Gopis. And in that way, he gave them some special reciprocation. And then 
he gave them something which even krishna could did not give krishna could not give that way he consoled them and then with respect to krishna so balram and duryodhan that particular relationship we discussed from the rasa perspective it is he is offering virya ras but from the guru perspective he is demonstrating causeless mercy but how you know we cannot have love for guru without love for krishna so guru's mercy without krishna's mercy does not work we need to if we get guru's mercy that should inspire us to connect with krishna but otherwise it will not work for us so thank you very much shri balram ji ki balram avirbhav maha mahotsav ki taigaur premanandi